Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jake Smash. This is going to be a Watcher of Realms video. It is 12.57, Wednesday, February the 7th, and it is time to start doing Void Rift walkthroughs. Um, up front, this is going to be a longer video than I usually put out. I'm going to go through all of the stages kind of slowly, explaining how you adapt for the, the stages, right? Different champs that you can use, all of that stuff. So... Um, this one's going to be longer, but I'm going to try and help you get through, understand the stages a little bit better so that you can utilize the champs that you have in order to clear them. So let's get started with this. So for Nightmare, you only have eight champs uh, instead of the 10 that you can use on the lower difficulties. All right. So lower difficulties, it just means lower gear thresholds and you have more options. So for, for Nightmare, my kind of go to for 90% of stages is. Uh, two tanks, two healers, two ranged fighters to go behind my tanks, and then two flex spots that can be marksmen or mages or whatever I need to flex for for that stage. Um, so for this for this stage, I'll just leave it with what it's at. I could I could adjust this, um, but I've got my two tanks. Regulus and Brakir. I've got my two ranged fighters, right? Zilla 2 and Aracha. I've got my two healers, Elowen and Vortex. And I have my two flex spots, Silas and uh, Comet, because they're, they're both just very, very powerful, right? So if you don't have these champs, that's okay. You don't need these champs. The point is the concept. You want two tanks, uh, to block both lanes because the in the map there's options. Let's just get to it so that we can talk and you know you can see what we're talking about at the same time. Sorry. So there's two lanes that they can get to your your crystal. Let's pick this up. So I'm gonna block one lane and I'm gonna block the other lane. Boss is attacking me. So I want to get some heals down. I'm going to start healing Regulus because he went down first and he's getting a suicide bug first. Oh, I didn't get heals down in time. His, uh, uh, I think his, his passive went off to, to save his life. That's okay. Let's, let's do it properly. Okay. So for things that you're considering, since... Only one mob comes from the top first before the bottom one. What you would do if you actually, you know, cared about doing it properly is you would put down your tank and then you would start healing that tank to keep them at full health. And then you would do the same thing. Sorry, I'll try and do these properly instead of just making silly mistakes and compensating for it with decent gear. And then use your second healer to heal your second tank. So your tanks should be strong enough to take uh, a single suicide bug, no problem. If your tanks are not strong enough, so right right there, right, that Aracha is going to make those falling stones hit your tanks. And so you want to keep your, your squishier folks out of that range. Let's actually, let's pay attention. And uh, and place folks so that they can actually die. Um, so Silas is going to get hit right there. Because I forgot how this map is set up. Let's do it properly. Let's do it the right way. This is how it would be in real life, right? You would see something. Fasty put something out. Uh, so we put down our tank. Okay. We would put down a heal. Now, the thing that I did wrong there, uh, because, you know, I haven't actually worked through these for a long time. The thing that I did wrong was I put Elowen in the middle so that she was blocking the spot where Silas would cover his, um, his, his, his lane. So I'm going to put Elowen facing up to heal Regulus. Brokir is a better tank than Regulus. Now I start placing my DPS. I keep, I'm keeping them in the middle there 
so that they're outside of that range of those falling stones. We get our ranged fighters. Now here, these suicide bugs do a lot of damage. So you're probably going to want some way to mitigate that, okay? So you can do that with this particular team, right? Regulus and Brokeer, their ults help with that. You could use Vortex's ults. You could use Gwendolyn. Shields help a lot, right? Some way um, uh, you could have your, um, your tanks have an unyielding effect. Whatever the case may be. You probably want some way to live through two of these suicide bugs, uh, unless you just have really good gear and you don't care. So we're going to act like we do care, and we're going to use each defender's uh, respective ults. Whoops, that was Comet. And I missed Regulus's ult, right? I mistimed that because I was talking. Um, oh, I wanted Zilla 2 back further because the bugs still hit there, Zilla 2 and Aracha. Okay, so there you go. I haven't worked through this in a long time. I shouldn't need them because of gear. I should be able to wait for them to respawn and then place them behind just fine. It shouldn't be an issue. I can I can help out with Elowin if I need to. We've got Falling Stones, but they won't hit anyone other than the tanks. I obviously could ult at any time. I'm just not really worried about it. There we go. And then we'll put... Because Brokeer only has one healer instead of two, I'll place Zilla 2 behind him to give him a little extra support. Zilla 2 is stronger. Now we're coming up on these suicide bugs again. Use your tank's ult. Use Vortex's ult. Use Gwendolyn, right? Whatever means of damage reduction you have, use it at that point. use people's ults and get this done and taken care of. There we go. First one worked through. Pick up our loot. Let's move on to the next one and work through some more problems that I haven't worked through in a long time. So I'm just going to keep the same team. The same concept applies, right? Assuming I don't know what's coming, I'm probably going to want to tank two lanes. I'm probably going to want two ways to heal. I'm probably going to want uh, four different DPS of varying flavors in order to take care of whatever comes my way. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's get a tank down. Let's get some heals on the board. Let's get another tank. I'll wait for those stones before placing a DPS. Let's get some more heals. I'm going to place Silas back there so he can take care of that lane, but he's outside of the range of those stones. This one, uh, boss throws out poison, so ideally you want a way to debuff. If you don't, though, you can compensate with heals. That's fine. It's not, it's not that difficult. Now for the Falling Stones, uh, since they're hitting fighters around them, 
you want some way to mitigate that damage, right? Kind of like you wanted a way to mitigate the suicide bug damage on the previous one. Let's actually do some damage here. Pay attention. Um, you want some way to mitigate that damage. Now, again, I'm just doing that by ulting with Brocure and Regulus, right? Their ults um, do that damage mitigation for themselves and folks around them. And uh, what's, what's Regulus's? Increases his HP while sharing damage to allies surrounding him. Uh, and uh, so <clears throat> I guess he doesn't really help folks around him, but that might be spread equally so it doesn't do a ton of damage, right? Let's heal from uh, the poisons. And this is just kind of the same concept. We're blocking two lanes. We have two sets of heals. Elowen is is optimal because she can heal both lanes and um, she can get rid of debuffs and she has... Elowen's always optimal for a healer. I don't know. Um, let's start using ults. Let's... I don't know. Let's pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This stage, cheapy, cheapy choppa. What the heck was that? That's the app that I use for shooting these videos. I, I to cut them and edit them. I don't know what that was advertising, but that was silly. So the only thing you really need to worry about here, right? Tank both lanes, have some heals going. Um, and uh, find a way to mitigate falling stone damage to the fighters or uh, your DPS champs around your tanks that will take damage from the stones. Whether that's uh, built-in ults like Procure, or, uh, you know, shields like Vortex or Gwendolyn, or maybe you just put a single HP percent um, piece of equipment on them. That works too, and I've done that before. You just swap out a single attack percent main, drop a little bit of damage, but um, actually stay alive with an extra 60% health. It makes a really big difference. For this one, let's see what we have. So this is, um, it's it's like a, it, it's a, your your gold or your, it's like your, your gold raid, right? So let's, uh, I'm actually, let's see what we have here. Let's do Demi. Let's do, those are, those are pretty sweet. Let's get rid of Zilla too, since you only hit one at a time. And let's throw Urid in on there. Yeah, let's have some fun with this. So, um, you're probably not going to have all of those champs. The point here is that you're going to get bum rushed by a bunch of enemies and just throw out a bunch of AOE damage. A ton of AOE damage and you will be fine. Primarily, it's going to come from AoE mages, but not entirely. Let's just throw people down. You don't need all of these people, but it's whatever. Speed it up. All right, there we go. Let's use an ult. Let's use Ajax. The only thing that you kind of need to consider here, um, these stages are really easy. The only thing that you kind of need to think about, right? You need to make sure that you have enough folks on the ground to slow down uh, the mobs enough for all of your mages to take care of them. So you need enough ground units. Now, whether that's two or three, kind of depends on your account, right? But... Um, the other thing that you might need to think about, right, is the timing of your ults. If you are close to struggling with this, then you need to consider when you can uh, prevent folks from, uh, say, say you only have two ground DPS folks, right? And you see like right there, 
there was a bunch of the big guys coming out. And uh, if they're going to overrun your two fighters on the ground, right, then save your ults for that time when you can just blast them to pieces so that you can get through their high HP. It's the only thing you need to consider for that stage. That stage is really simple. Let's pick up all of the stuff. Now, there are tips here, right? So, like, applied to enemies, max HP of the Ancient God's Messenger increases by 30%. There's some combat conditions. Um, those can be useful. They can be. Um, they're usually just informative, though. Like, cool, they have more HP. So what? This one's a little tricky because uh, you've got mobs coming from the sides and you've got Calypso the boss shooting and you've got flying mobs coming from the top. I don't remember exactly how I worked this, this out, so we're going to figure it out together. Let's put um, Silas down. Oh, I think I needed him in the middle so he can hit both of them. Yeah, let's restart that. So let's get a marksman to take out the flying mobs. I'm going to place Zillatu down there so that she can hit the boss before she summons her extra... Uh, oh no, I forgot to put a healer down. So Calypso will shoot the last champ that you place on the map. And I obviously forgot that, so let's put those two down, and then let's actually get some heals going. And... Hmm. I'm just going to do Vortex. There we go. So I place Vortex, I place the healer, right? So Calypso's going to attack him, because he was the last one placed. And now... Um, Zilla 2 is free to do her job. So the fact that she attacks the last one, that's something that's important, something to think about when you're doing this, right? As you're placing your champs, you want the last one that you place to be strong. So whether that's a strong healer, like an HP-based healer, or just a, an attack-based healer, but you put an, an HP percent main to make them a little bit more tankier, or you place a tank, it needs to be a stronger one. So let's get um, attack down, and then... Let's get Brook here so that we can tank that. And now I've got a few more champs to place. But uh, remember, I want my last one to be strong. So I want my last unit that I place to be Regulus at this point. So Silas is taking the middle. Comet, I, I don't remember. Um, let's place him... Facing to the right, yeah, so that he can hit Calypso just like Zilla 2 is hitting Calypso on the left. Let's get Elowin down for some heals, and now the last one placed will be Regulus. And that's who Calypso will shoot. Uh, looks like I did Comet's ult a little too soon. I wanted, I I wanted to wait for him. Oh, that's okay. I broke the shield. That was close. I almost did his a little bit too fast. Uh, let's do Zilla 2's ult so you can actually start helping folks. You want someone that can hit the boss. Because if you don't break the boss's shield, if you don't break Calypso's shield, right? Heal as necessary here, right? If you don't break Calypso's shield, then sh just like the real Calypso, she'll start building those stones. Someone died because I wasn't paying attention. It was Zilla too. Oh, man. All right. Um, she'll, she'll summon those, those so stones and then she'll attack more often. So you want a way to attack her. 
So instead of placing Silas facing up, let's have him facing left. Uh, no, that won't, that way that fish will get by. So I'm going to have him facing left, right? That way he can take out the flying mobs coming from the left side and he can nuke the boss. Let's try something else, right? I'm going to put Comet still facing right, but I'm going to place him next so that he can take out this flying fish mob that comes from the right. Right? And maybe you use another marksman here. I don't know. But it's the idea, right? So... Comet should survive one hit. Yeah, no problem there. I was supposed to nuke the boss. There we go. Let's put folks down. Put Elowen down so that she covers both of the DPS that are on the raised tiles. And now my last two, right, are going to be Zilla 2 and Regulus. Zilla 2, though, the reason that she lost, she was facing left, so she wasn't attacking all of these mobs that were coming from up top. So I need her there. I need her facing north with Regulus there. Slow it down just a little bit. So we're going to give Calypso a little bit of time to come around the corner before I use Comet's ult. There we go. She comes around the corner. She gets blasted. She loses her shield. She doesn't build one of those stones, and then she runs away. Now I'm going to start getting folks on the left side here. So... I've got Silas and Zilla 2 covering it now, but I'm going to use one of their ults. I want to save Silas's because his main purpose in life, remember, is to nuke the boss. So I want to keep that in play. Now we use Silas's ult. He'll take out the mobs first, and then he'll move on to the boss. Assuming he has enough time. Oh, it doesn't look like he has enough time. I guess I should have nuked with him sooner. That's all right. So it looks like she'll... So for that... Oh, I got through it anyways. But that's just because my Silas is disgusting, okay? Um, if you don't have a Silas that's as strong as mine, uh, then you should have ulted sooner, started taking care of those mobs. That way you could have ulted a second time. There we go. And these are the last two. So that's it. It's done. All right. So you got the boss on the left side, the right side, back to the left side. You need a way to nuke the boss. Otherwise, she's going to start building those stones, summoning those stones, and taking you out. So, so far, our same strategy is working, right? And I know, um, listen, you can, uh, Drake, shout out to Drake. I think it was Drake. No, no. Someone uh, teased Drake about it. Someone else put out a... Sorry, Drake. Um, someone else put out a video on uh, Nightmare Void Rift using only Epic Champs. Right, so you don't need these... Uh, all of the champs that I'm using. It's the concept that you're understanding how uh, the stage works, what the boss does, and where to tank and where to attack and all of that, right? So general formula that you can use for almost all of them is two tanks, two healers, two uh, ranged fighters, and then two flex spots. That can be used almost everywhere. So for this one, I'm going to start off placing Zilla 2 here. Again, it doesn't have to be Zilla 2, but you want to put a fighter here to tank this bottom lane so that they don't jump into the whirlpools and then transform and get stronger and go right into your portal there that you can't block. You can't block it. So you have to block them on the bottom before they go to that. Next up, I'm going to put my uh, my Silas so that he can shoot the boss when she comes out. 
I'm going to place Vortex down. Um, now, that's the biggest thing. The reason I place Vortex there is in case Zillatu needed a healer at this point. She doesn't right now. But if she was a little bit weaker, I can use Zillatu's ult. Why not? So yeah, in a perfect world, you want a hero here like Zilla 2, who can hit the ground champs coming out of the portal and can hit those flying mobs. Right here, I'm going to place my second DPS and a tank. And I'm going to do the tank so that um, that's who the boss targets. I use my disgusting Silas. I get rid of, uh, I, I don't let her summon that first seal stone, and then I pull him. I'm going to place my second healer here to uh, keep my tank alive. I'm using Elowen, right, for extra rage. You don't need Elowen. So right now, that one hit is taking her over halfway. So once the seal stone goes into effect, she'll be in trouble. It's okay, because the reason I pulled Silas was so that I could place him up here and then place my tank down. So now she, if she were to attack, she'll hit Regulus as a second tank, and I can use Silas to nuke the boss into Oblivion. And you don't need a super, super crazy strong um, Silas to beat this stage, right? The concept is you want to, if at all possible, prevent the boss from summoning those seal stones, right? If you don't, then you just need tankier tanks, and that's okay. But if you can prevent it with uh, a strong uh, marksman like Silas, or even a strong AoE mage, whatever, then do it. Prevent both, um, or just be really tanky. Either one will work. I don't need two tanks here. I just placed the second one there. Remember to direct Calypso's targeting. And that's it. Once the boss is out of the way, right, that's the, the, the sketchy part. Because once she starts summoning those seal stones, it just gets tougher and tougher. Pop a couple ults. Let's get rid of Elowen just so I can use Silas here a little bit faster. There we go. And it's done. Okay. And there's one more stage in the first phase, and then we'll end this video. It's a long one, but it's okay. We're walking through stuff. We're explaining it. Now, Remember, if you're struggling anywhere, right, if, if you're missing something from my explanations, ask a comment, join the Discord, ask a comment, there will be a link in the description, um, and I will try to help you if I can, right? You don't need these champs, it's the concept. I think I've said that like four times, I should probably just stop. This one, same kind of concept as the first Aratra ones. You need to think about those falling stones and the poisons, right? So debuffs, oft optimal, not debuffs. You need to be able to um, cleanse debuffs optimally. If you don't, just more heals are fine. That will work. And there are lots of really great healers in the game. So monsters are coming down the right side first. So we're going to tank them. We're going to start attacking them. We're going to place some heals. Let's get a defender. There we go. We got our defender. We got a ranged fighter. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to get a defender. Hmm. I think I might have needed to put Zilla 2 on... That right side. We'll see. We'll see if Comet can can keep it together. Yeah. Okay. So I need someone a little bit stronger than Aracha, right? She's not a 
traditional like super strong DPS champ. I'm just using her as a ranged fighter to boost Silas because Silas is disgusting. Go. And we'll block the left side. Attention, use Zillatu's ult. I should have used that a long time ago. I was not paying attention. Okay, let's heal from all of the poisons. What really helped me with these stones early on was prior to the stones falling, I would use Vortex's ult to get those shields, right? You need some sort of damage mitigation. So find out what that means for you, how you can get that damage mitigation. Place your second DPS for the opposite side, whichever side that is. Vortex throwing out shields, right? using one healer, whichever, whoever it is, to heal from the, um, the, the poison splash, the po poison attack, and then using Vortex to throw out shields works phenomenally. Let's pick it up. All right, so I'll walk through that again as it's happening this time. So we've got the Deathly Screech, right? Throws that out, damages everyone, poisons everyone. I'm going to heal from that. And then for the stones, that's when I'm going to use Vortex's ult. I can also use Brokir's ult, right? There's built-in damage mitigation there for him and those around him. But really, just Vortex's ult, just throwing those shields out, that makes such a huge difference. Uh, plenty big enough. Pick it up. Silas, take out that left side. Right? And if your if your tanks aren't if your if your if your DPS aren't quite strong enough to kill the mobs faster, right? Then you get into like putting bastion rings on your tanks, which they should probably have anyways. Increased increased uh, block abilities. So we've got Falling Stones, so we want to throw out our shields and our damage mitigation, whatever form that is, before the stones happen. Oh, and I died anyways, because I missed something. Oh well, that happens. There's the Deathly Screech. I'm probably going to pull this off just because... Oh no, I didn't. Okay. That's okay. So let's pick it up. What did, I, what did I miss on that last one? Paying too much attention to talking. Let's get our other attacker down there. I know, I placed them early. They're getting attacked. Oh, that's why I waited. Yeah, I forgot about that too. So you want to wait until the last second. That's why. I forgot. See? So the reason why you wait to place the tank is because Ratchet will start attacking everyone. So wait until the last second, throw everyone down so that you have uh, your DPS, your tank, your heals, everything on the board so that you can start healing right away. Hey, I'm glad I did that because I forgot that was even a thing. I would have missed explaining it. So let's throw our heals down. Let's get our ult going. Pick it up a little bit, two times speed. Let's get our other tank on the board. DPS, Deathly Screech, Falling Stones,
right click screech. Falling stones, damage mitigation. And I'll start ulting with all my DPS also, start killing everything. And that's it. All that's left is the boss. So we'll see what I did wrong last time. Must have missed an ult or something. Not paying attention. All right, falling stones. So let's do damage mitigation. Yeah. There's the deathly screech. There we go. All right. Easy peasy. Okay, so that is the first phase um, for, for this week's rotation. So I'm going to stop there. This video has been long enough. I'm going to do them one phase at a time. I'll do second phase in a different video, third phase in a different video. And then in follow-up weeks where, they're, where the phases change, I'll do those also. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you appreciated this, please support the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, join the discord channel. It's a ton of fun and I will see you in the next one.